What's going on? How's everyone doing? Just shout out to you. Everybody else who's cool. Shepke! I didn't say. Eat your popcorn. <laughs> and your Coca Cola and relax. <laughs> anyway, tell Colin. I'm rich. What's going on? This is Colin. How's everybody doing? Happy Tuesday night. Hope you guys all had a great day. Yeah, daylight savings is still messing with me. I slept really long this morning. Not intentionally. Just decided, you know, I just had to sleep a little bit. Anyways, hope you guys had a great day. Hope you guys have a great week. Yeah, we're here all week, so let's go. Anyways, I've got a good couple of clips for you. First one. We start with our favorite neighborhood judge with great responsibility or with great power comes great responsibility. We have Judge Slavin coming in at number one. He's going to start our, our our night off and he starts it off well. Yeah. We get a good Judge Slavin speech out of it. He he, <laughs> It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. And because he's a friend of the channel, it's even better because we all know him. Anyways, hope you guys are all having a great night. Heather. Sleep well. I love you. Hopefully, you know, you actually get some sleep tonight. And yeah, don't pay attention to the stream too much. So you can sleep. That that was the point of that. Anyways, anyways, before I hit the play button, you already know what to do. Hit the like and subscribe. Do your jump kick backflips. Let's go. Gazicki. That's your honor. James Gazicki on behalf of uh, Miss Tech Miller. She's going to plead guilty on the charge. And uh, hold on one second. On a charge of malicious destruction of property, restitution of $1,350. And then we also have a violation of probation file. She is that still on probation. All right, from the probation department. Yes, I'm Kelsey Hammer on behalf of probation. Ms. Tech Miller has been second. warned yes, uh, for quite some time. Um, actually exceeded in February. Um, she was supposed to be here in person uh, for the probation violation. She was notified. Um, is he still is he still playing the same case he was he started last night? Yeah, it's it's heavy. That's a heavy one. That is a really heavy one. Um, if it's not, I I have not been in big and stream tonight. I. I was taking care of other matters, getting ready for the night stream. But yeah, he's he's been uh he's been hitting hard lately with the heavy cases. Tater Todd, does it get worse? She does it get worse? She does it get worse? She, um, yes, it does get worse. Uh, I mean, it's it's actually about the same. So uh, uh, yeah, it it doesn't really get worse. Uh, you know, it, it just kind of stays the same throughout the entire thing. But yeah, she's in trouble. But thank you for the super chat, Hitter Todd. Violation petition. Um, and I suck. And I suck. Kelsey Hammer on behalf of probation. Ms. Tech Miller has been Second. warned yes, uh, for quite some time. Um, actually exceeded in February. Um, she was supposed to be here in person uh, for the probation violation. She was notified um, on her violation petition um, because of my recommendation that I'm making today. Um, so let me set this for Baker cases. Baker cases, not case right because it was in between two of her files which is Jim on the current case it's a plea to MDOP with the restitution of 1350. Yeah that's what we have on the other one. Yep yep and Garza you don't have a, an amount do you all right, so I, I, I see the I see the plea agreement with regard to the malicious destruction of property case. Did you have the opportunity to speak with Ms. Havner on the probation case? Because if so, 
the tubes back here were going down and I couldn't hear half what you said. So no, I did ask him to Ms. Tech Miller. Um, I was waiting for her to appear in person and I did not talk to the attorney. Um, I think the confusion happened because both cases got set and one notice says Zoom and one says in person. So yes. That's why that is. All right. So did you have an opportunity, Mr. Kaziki, to speak with Ms. Havner with regard to how we're yeah, moving forward? I did on both the I, I spoke with uh, the defendant on both the violation of probation and also on the uh, plea, Your Honor. I, I, I get that. Yeah, Judge Oakley doesn't stream all that often. I, I have him, uh, you know, it, it's supposed to pop up on YouTube. Maybe he streams every day and YouTube just doesn't let me know. But I, I try to look out for Judge Oakley. I like him, too. I really do. Also, Tater Todd, for the, for the other $5 Super Chat, thank you so much. I'll bring it up. Fingered Straya. Uh, uh, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Tater Todd. You're awesome, man. Thank you. Did you have the opportunity to speak with the probation officer on the probation violation? No, I did not. Okay. So um, I want to make sure we have an opportunity for you to do so. Did you see the file on that? or the recommendation or I just want to make sure that you're fully advised of the premises, that's all yeah no I've seen the file uh I'm aware of the uh recommendation I advise the client of the recommendation and my understanding is that probation will be closed out so the new charge I guess would start all over again well I am prepared to go forward with my recommendation for the probation file, regardless of the new charge, Judge. Yeah, the the recommendation is that the 7, 7411 that she was on is terminated. And the conviction on that matter be entered, that she served 90 days for the violation and the remaining balance be waived as far as uh, what she owes on that. So, I am more concerned that it doesn't look like there's a door frame on that bathroom. That's a bathroom for sure. You can see the toilet. There is no door frame. Door frame. You know, where's our heart sometimes? How, how, yeah, no idea. No idea. But yeah, bathroom, no door frame. How do we, how do we close the door? Is she pleading? Is she pleading guilty to that probation violation? That's why I'm. That's why I'm uh, curious as to what the uh, how the violation is being taken care of, or are we what setting it for a hearing, or, or are we going to hold the hearing? Just that's why I was wondering. Guilty, Your Honor. To the probation violation. Yes. Yeah, it might be a sliding door. I don't know, but there, there's a little. A little reflection at the very top of the the door frame that could possibly there might be something there. It's just painted the exact same color and we can't see it. But from this angle, it doesn't look like there's a door at all to that bathroom. Erica, welcome. Glad to see you. I'm glad you're dropping by. Yeah, don't forget to hit the like button. Come on, Jfire. Oh, this, just wait, just wait. We're going to get a Judge Slavin speech here in a minute. Hey, what's up, Jay Hart? Nope, wrong one. Yeah, yeah. I'm very curious about the door. Well, luckily, 
Judge Slavin mutes himself for about a minute, so we have the opportunity to thoroughly discuss this door or non existent door. But it was kind of weird about the camera angle is whatever she has. Oh, I fast forward it. Yeah, you know what? Again, I suck. Be a witness for yourself if you want your advice of rights with Mr. G you had the yeah. opportunity to speak with Mr. Gazicki regarding these matters. Yes. Let's first deal. Let's uh, first deal with the probation violation. Actually, let's let's deal with the the, Michigan, the uh, malicious destruction of property charge. So, you um, had the opportunity to go over uh, your advice of rights with Mr. Gazicki. Is that correct? Yes. Do you understand all of your constitutional rights? Yes. You understand that you do have the right to have a trial by judge or by jury. You have the right to call witnesses, cross-examine witnesses, the right to be a witness for yourself if you if you so chose, and the right to remain silent, and not have that silence used against you. At that uh, trial, the prosecution, um, the prosecution would have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you were guilty. Now, are you knowingly and voluntarily? That means nobody promised you anything, nobody threatened you in, in any way. Are you knowingly and voluntarily waiving those constitutional rights so that you can take advantage of the plea that they offered you? Yes. You understand that the plea that they offered you is that you plead straight up to the malicious destruction of property and that there would be restitution. Uh, and you'd be on probation. You'd be restitution in the amount of $1,350. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. And then Tommy, welcome. Good to see you, buddy. Can my mods please drop Tommy's link? Tommy has a great channel. He had a great one today. Please go check it out. He has an awesome channel. Good to see you, buddy. As to that charge, you also understand that that violate that charge violates the existing 7411 that you are already currently on. You understand that? Yes. All righty. And as to the malicious destruction of property, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. All right. Now, were you in the city of Taylor on August the 4th, 2023? Yes. Were you on or around uh, an individual by the name of Kelly Kramer? Yes. Did you maliciously destroy the property of Ms. Kramer? Yes. All right. I do find that there's a factual basis for accepting your plea. Mr. Gazicki, do you concur? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Now, with regard to that, I am going to sentence you to the following. Uh, nothing yet. You came in at the perfect time. You didn't miss anything. All we were discussing is, does she have a bathroom door or not? That's all you missed. Now it's about to go down. It's about to go. Well, it's not about to go down. We're just about to get her a classic Judge Slavin speech. Probation for a period of 12 months. Fine of $5. Court cost of $5. State assessment of $125. That's a total of $135. Are you currently working? Yes. Okay. Uh, probation oversight fee of uh, $200. And then the restitution of $1,350. And um, so let me get that total up first. <laughs> Notice that the fines are are and the and the probation oversight fee are not are not that high. Why? Because you have thirteen hundred and fifty dollars in restitution. I want to make sure that you're working and taking care of to get paid off because of uh, this individual is out that, that those funds. Now, it's the only reason why I then just put you in jail for ninety days for a host of reasons. One, the fact that you just blatantly didn't even try to get things done on the 7411 with Miss Havner constantly trying to work with you and, and for you, but it just seemed to fall on deaf ears. 
So we'll get to that in a minute. And two, I want to make sure the other reason I didn't uh, the other reason I didn't give you jail time at this point right now is because, well, how are you gonna take how are you gonna take care of this restitution? Because now me punishing you punishes someone else because they're still out the thirteen hundred and fifty dollars. So the total you got is uh, $1,684. So I divide that by 10. And, and Your Honor, I have to run into a different room, but just uh, no contact sure. with the victim as well to be added to that period. Sure. All right, so I'm gonna put you on a payment plan for $168.50. Per month. First payment isn't going to start for a month. That's going to be April 12th. So it gives you a chance to get that, get that, and that wraps up all the fines, costs, and restitution all in the one ball. There's going to be no contact with the uh, victim, no leaving the state of Michigan without the consent of the court. Maintain employment. Report to probation, either in person or by Zoom or by phone or by any other means they direct you to do so. Now, here's the last final piece of the puzzle for you though. I am also giving you 90 days of jail time. That I am holding in advance. All right, now we'll get the judge slave speech. I know, I know, he's a talker, right? Gotta walk himself through all the laws. And if he's listening, he might be listening. Don't, don't say hi till after you finish watching yourself, but he might say hi a little bit. He he sometimes stops by. But uh yeah, now we get the Judge Slavin speech. Do you understand what holding what you understand what holding the jail time in advance means, ma'am? No. It means this. I got you a nice probation sandwich. I put it on the plate there for you. I already cut it up into pieces. All you gotta do is take the advice and just do the, the things that you need to do on probation. Make your payments in a timely fashion. Don't pick up any new charges or any new convictions. All those, all those are just little bites of the sandwich that you gotta take. Or, because on the back burner, I got a 90 day pot of stew over here. So you can either eat the sandwich that's on the plate in front of you and everything is gonna turn out well for you. Or, I'll just toss the sandwich and you can get right to that the whole pot of stew. Understand what I'm saying? Yes. All right. So All right. I really hope I really hope you're listening, Judge. That made no sense. You can do a lot better than that. And you know we love you here, but you gotta work on your storytelling. That that didn't make any sense. You can eat a sandwich. What if I wanted stew instead of a sandwich? Can I eat the stew and hold the, the sandwich in advance? I, I would rather that. Sometimes I would just rather stew than a sandwich. Yeah, there's just... Just like, you got to step your game up, buddy. You got to step your game up. All right, now... As for the other case, that also includes uh, no use or possession of any uh, alcohol or controlled substances, unless you have a prescription by a doctor for the same. Testing at random as per, per the uh, probation department. No. As to the violation of the 7411, how you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. All right. You understand that you could have had a hearing in that matter 
could have called witnesses, cross-examined witnesses. You could have been a witness for yourself. You could have remained silent. I'd have that silence used against you. Are you knowingly and voluntarily waiving all those rights uh, so that you can go ahead and take advantage of the plea that they offered you? Yes, sir. All righty. As for the violation, is it um, the, the violation you failed to uh, appear for your drug testing as ordered? On multiple occasions, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. You also failed to report or uh, you absconded from this court for more than 60 days, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And I find there's a factual basis for accepting your plea to the uh, probation violation. Now, the recommendation on that is that you do 90 days in jail, that I revoke the uh, 7411. I am going to revoke the 7411. And enter the conviction. I am going to waive the, the, the fines and costs, the balance that you owed on that, the $500. Okay. As for the 90 days in jail, I'm going to go ahead and just close this file out because I'm looking at it like this. You're showing up today. I'm hoping that you're trying to turn over a new leaf. I'm hoping that you are trying to take a new path. I'm hoping that you are realizing that you know what I, I got all this stuff and i'm kind of discombobulated right now. i am not afk if i was afk i wouldn't be out, be able to highlight your messages i am still here i was just there's only about 30 seconds left of this case so i was gonna wait till it was finished to pause the video but i'm you know i'm not gonna let a good pause moment pass me by thank you for biggin biggin's awesome everyone loves his channel everyone does thank you all for the raiders we're finishing up a good Judge Slavin clip. We're about to we're about to go into a sovereign citizen. At least at least someone I think is a sovereign citizen. It's a short clip. It's only four or five minutes, but it's good. That's next. That's next. We'll talk about that though. That's that's what's coming in about a minute. Oh, and because I'm paused, might as well just nail everything out. Kathy Berry donated five memberships. Thank you so much, Kathy Berry, and welcome to all the new members. Members only Monday happened yesterday, so you got to wait a week to do it again. But go check out the members only videos. We have a lot of fun. And then Nick Jones also mentioned. Who? Who? Nick Jones. Who? Nick Jones. He also donated five memberships. Thank you so much, Nick. Both of you are awesome. Both Kathy and Nick, thank you so much. And welcome to all the new members. Let's finish this clip so we can get to the potential sovereign citizen. No, he's, he's a sovereign citizen. He is. He is. And it's good. Right now, and I really need to get my stuff. I need to get everything straightened up and on the right path. And I hope that's what you want to do. So let's make let's let this uh, this new charge here that be the new path. We got and we have a we have an outline of how this is going to go. There's a clear fork in the road. One leads to 90 Daysville. The other one leads to take care of your payment plan. Take care of all this uh, stuff. Show up to probation, and then 12 months later, we'll see we'll see which road you took. All right. Thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and close out. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to close out this file without improvement. I'm going to adopt a recommendation as amended by me. So means the jail time is out. And that looks good. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay. All right. Now, Ms. Havner will be in contact with you regarding the probation that starts immediately when you're going to need to check in. Uh, you'll be getting a copy of the payment plan. Like I said, one sixty-eight fifty per month. That balls everything up into ten months' time. That way it gets you a chance to get, and it even gives you one month to get started before it kicks in, okay? Thank you. I want you to be able to hit the ground running, stay on the right path that you need to stay on, okay? Thank you. Had to start off with some Judge Slavin. Now, there was a special guest in Judge Slavin's court today who did not appear who I was really excited for, didn't show up, but we will see them again shortly.
this week, perhaps. Anyways, that was fun. Um, now that I'm paused, yeah, I didn't miss your messages. Don't don't do that. Don't say that, Alana. Don't say that. I, I'm here. I see your messages. If if you said something that you want me to see, just say it again and and I will see it. But don't. But I I try I try to read the chat as much as I possibly can. Anyways, potential sovereign citizen, probable sovereign citizen. Now this guy, it's a short clip. You know what? I'm just gonna let this clip play through, and because I've got a lot of questions, and I think you guys have the same questions I have. So let's let's go, let's go. Mr. Uh, Miss Williams, can you tell Mr. Mitchell um, what your, uh, I'm sorry, not Mr. Mitchell, Mr. Howard, what your uh, recommendation is for his case? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. Howard. The recommendation for your case would be a $100 fine on the expired tag um, and a $200 fine on the no insurance. The uh, driving with an expired uh, license would be dismissed. Um, do you have active insurance now? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, no, I don't have a car. So yes, that would be a two. It would be a three hundred dollar fine, um, three hundred dollars in fines total. Um, if that was something you would like to accept, you do. Yeah, I know. I said it wasn't going to pause it, but this is a good comment. I know. I know penguins aren't in Canada. It's a it's a joke between my girlfriend and I because she is Canadian. So. When I say there's penguins in Canada, there are penguins in Canada. That's pretty much how our relationship goes. So, yeah, I know they're not there. I do. I know. I know. And it's funny between us. So, yeah. But for on the record, for the record, on top of the record, beneath the record, to the left and the right of the record, yes, you are correct. There are no penguins in Canada. Just don't tell her I said that. You have the ability to use a NOLA in this case. Okay. Uh -oh. I'm sorry. No, uh, no, I was just trying. Lorelai, absolutely. Hello, Lorelai, and welcome. I hope you're having a, a great evening. Let me see, is it on the record? Are we on the record? Yes. Okay, so I was just trying to figure out what 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 was the um what was the jurisdiction on it? What was your jurisdiction? Because I I I'm not aware of this case. I was not aware because I know it's outdated. I was not aware of this case. Okay, th these cases don't become outdated. It's old, but we're getting it's a lot old, of cases. but hold on. I, this I, we're okay. getting a lot of cases that are coming up from magistrate court that were held in magistrate court for a while. It's not outdated. It's just an older case. This is a 2021 CR, which means they accused it in 2021. I mean, they they accused it as a 2021 case, but it doesn't mean it's not valid. I'm a state court judge. I preside over traffic offenses. You have traffic mm -hmm. offenses. So um, did you wish to enter a plea? And let me explain. The NOLO plea would help you avoid penalties um, such as points on your license or a um, or a suspension of your license. So if you wanted to use a NOLO plea, I would allow you to do that. And the fines, um, the $100 fine with all the surcharges would be $151.50, so $151.50. The no insurance charge would be $298 total, and I would be able to give you up to 60 days to pay. Are you still talking about me missing a comment? What, what comment did I miss? What did I miss? Now you're talking about birthday cake, and now I think you're talking about me. Because my birthday is in less than two weeks so alana what what did i miss i like cake i like cake i'm really sorry if i missed your comment i really am sorry i also promised i wouldn't pause it through this clip and this is the third pause in the first minute and a half so yeah <laughs> we need to let this play hey unless you wanted to go on probation we have a pay only probation option if you wanted to pay all of those you would have up to 12 months to pay them but as well, soon as you pay the fines and fees your probation would end. later i'm just the first thing i'll tell you is well, that can i um can i have another for, for the court Certainly before. all right well again i suck at editing i suck at editing <laughs> i really do uh your birthday is this sunday as in, in the the 16th no, that's the 17th. Oh, the 17th. Your birthday is on St. Patrick's Day. That's awesome. My birthday is on the 27th. So I am, yeah, I turned 40 on the 27th. 
but that's awesome. Uh, happy birthday to you. I don't know if you're Irish or not, but yeah. But uh, happy birthday on the 17th. I'm sure I'll see you before then. And also, Kiki, new member. Thank you so much, Kiki. Very much appreciate it. Check out the members-only content we have. And now you can play with the emojis. They're a lot of fun. All right, let's go. After my bad editing. It's not going to change a, um, or a suspension of your license. So if you wanted to use a NOLO plea, I would allow you to do that. And the fines, um, the hundred dollar fine with all the surcharges would be one fifty one fifty, so one hundred and fifty one dollars and fifty cents. The no insurance charge would be two hundred and ninety eight dollars total, and I would be able to give you up to sixty days to pay unless you wanted to go on probation. We have a pay only probation option. If you wanted to pay all of those, you would have up to twelve months to pay them. But as well, soon as you paid the fines and fees, your probation would end. Well, can I um can I have another for Alana? Happy birthday! I have missed that. When I pause and I talk, I get into my head. As my entire comment likes to, comment section likes to tell me, I like to hear myself talk. So when I'm talking, I generally am not reading chat. Thank happy birthday, happy birthday, Alana! You know what? I'm gonna do something for your birthday. I'm gonna do something. I have as a creator of a channel I have the ability to gift memberships so i am going to i was going to wait till the 15th but this is the 12th so we can do this let's see uh membership gifting yep i got 5 left to give i can give i can give 10 free memberships every month as a creator and there you go that's your birthday present i know you're already green i know you're already green but it still makes me feel good cuz i'm I'm doing that on your behalf. So happy birthday, Alana. I am very sorry I missed your message. Happy birthday. I hope you're having an amazing day. And thank you for spending your birthday with us. That's awesome. Thank you. For the court date, so I can get into my attorney. Who's your attorney? Hold on. Oh, and let me just tell you, the no insurance charge, that's statutory. That fine is written into the statute, so it's not going to change. So it's going to be $200 all day, every day. Um, the no no tag, maybe there's some play or leeway with that one, but I know the no insurance. And the no insurance, if you weren't able to use your no low, it would end with a, a suspension of your license. Okay. So that's just information for you. So you said you wanted to hire an attorney? Yes, I have an attorney. Who's your attorney? Uh, I have the information. I'm going to give you the information. Yeah. One moment. Uh, just a spoiler alert. I looked this attorney's name. He's about to say up. There's no attorney that has that name in the state of Michigan. There isn't. This is his sovereign citizen contact. And I cannot wait for his next appearance. That's why I say I'm pretty sure he's a sovereign citizen. Very probable. If there, if there's anybody that knows the guy's name, he's about to say, you know what? Don't, but don't harass him. Right. Do, do not do that. We're not, we're not going to publicly bully the name he's about to say you know what i should probably just mute it out to be fair because it's not an attorney i looked it's not uh yeah i'm gonna mute it out because i don't want i don't want you guys harassing the dude you, you, you know what i trust you guys i trust you guys i trust you and your honor just for the court's awareness There's... the citation was accused within the statute of limitations uh Yep. It was Demon Parker. I'm sorry, my Mr. Attorney Hunter. is Damon Parker. Damon Parker? Yes. All right. Um, we'll give you a 30-day reset. Damon Parker will have to do what is called an entry of appearance. Um, mm -hmm. that means he has to uh let us know that he is representing you. Okay. All right. All right. All right, thank you. All right. It's your birthday too, Mark. Mark, happy birthday. It's I've got a lot of March birthdays. March is March is a great month to have a birthday, and you know why? Because it's the best, best month of the year. Winter's ending. We got the basketball tournament going on. You know, there's a lot of stuff to do. You know, the end of winter is always a celebration, right? Hey, I, I got nothing. That's that's all I got for March. That's all I got. <laughs> uh, but yeah, happy birthday, Mark. If it's your birthday as well. Also, yeah, I know I let that guy's name play. Don't, 
don't go do anything dumb, guys. I already looked his name up. He's not an attorney, and I cannot wait for that guy's next appearance. All right, let's jump into the next clip. Uh, I think we're jump. I think we'll go back. I think we're going to Judge Simpson now. Yeah, Judge Simpson. I'm I'm fairly certain it's Judge Simpson. You know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes your ex is is just the devil. It's just the devil. Yeah. Court does call the case of the people versus George White. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Sam Bernstein with on behalf of Mr. White. Permission to practice is granted. Thanks for jumping in on my line. Oh. <laughs> I was so worried about my line. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. I know. I know. It's um, first, first day. No. <laughs> she's like a veteran at this point. I know. I know. I don't even know why she asked. Right? I mean, she has to. Permission to practice for myself, too, Your Honor. That's... <laughs> that one would be denied. You know that. <laughs> Fair enough. All practice, right. Sir. What are we doing on this? Uh, I'm just jumping on the case, Your Honor. I'm asking for an adjournment to. Um, maybe maybe approach. Oh boy. It's a Monday. I have two. All right. <laughs> you, everyone who has a March birthday. Everyone who has a March birthday. Yeah, we all know it's the best month of the year, right? Happy birthday to all the March birthdays. You guys are all awesome. Thank you for hanging out with us. Hope you guys all had a great birthday. We're going to have a birthday stream for me what i'm gonna do a, a birthday stream on the 27th but the monday before since no one believes i can actually cook i'm gonna do a cooking stream the monday before it will be a members only stream though it will be my members only stream the monday before my birthday so my birthday is the 27th i believe that's a wednesday so the members only monday will be the 25th and that will be i will show you how to make the world's best grilled cheese so look forward to that but that's going to be members only because trust me if if you don't if you're not a fan of the channel you don't want to see that anyways let's get back to judge simpson and i paused it right before they take a recess so i should have just waited 10 seconds okay he says really <laughs> and i already said it's a short talk this is long. Uh, okay hold on i have uh, she's slow <laughs> I know, because he just started walking. I know. All right, recall the case of People versus George White. Sam Bernstein again for Mr. White, Your Honor. All right. Uh, reference, we, before I pass the case, we at a bench conference about some phone calls that were made and I let you talk to your client. Also, that there at least was an indication that the defendant may have been within one half mile of the excluded zone. We called over to community corrections. They've indicated that there is no violations at this point. So I'm not going to deal with that. But um, I, I can address the phone calls that the court would like. Yes, please. Um, there is a something of a story, and um, we're not going to litigate the um, probate stuff matters. But so there's been a very stressful situation going on with George White's um, mother being sick in the hospital. Um, uh, apparently, he has like an, an alternate medical power of attorney. The complaint he does. He does. Yes. Okay. Or, or, or medical power of attorney. I don't know how to phrase it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Well, let me just go first. And we'll he's, see. he's got the medical power. Yes. Okay. But I, I think the the victim might also have like a medical power of attorney or a claimed medical power of attorney. And so he said that he was like signing paperwork for like an immediate surgery and that he was like stopped in the middle of signing it. And they said that the other person, the, the victim was like wanting something different for the mother. And so he says that he gave his phone to a nurse who made the calls to the victim that he did not call her and that when he learned that she was there he later went into like another section of the hospital to like stay far away from the situation so you're saying 
just so that I'm clear, all six of the calls were from that? Yes, he says they were made like back to back to back. That from... was on the fourth. Right. But right. what about the second? I don't know about this. No, I don't know. Um, but he, he says, he told me he has, he has no wish to, to speak with her at all, um, that he hasn't spoken with her, um, and that he doesn't want to go near her or have anything to do with her whatsoever. whatsoever. So he definitely doesn't, it wasn't like a don't show up to court kind of situation. He just doesn't want to have contact with her whatsoever. Um, it seems like there may be some sort of like kind of probate ish. Uh, issue with like medical powers of attorney and who may or may not have power or something, but the appropriate form to litigate that wouldn't be, I don't think it'd be Judge Simpson, it would be um, a, another forum and that's not really for today, I would suggest, but um, I think that's sort of like the, the backdrop of what kind of what happened here. But I mean, either way, I mean, he's not supposed to have any contact with her and I, th I think he knows that, and he, he doesn't wish to to speak with her on, on any basis. Cassandra, I'll let you talk. One of the calls was on March second, and then on the fourth, one of the calls that was made was two hours before the back to back calls that were supposedly from the nurse. We would be concerned with the contact of the victim. I won't stop you from talking if you want to okay. contact. First and foremost, she gave a death while I was in jail. She was a depth when the depths in jail. I, I was in the tank right there. I didn't arrange yet. Gave him his her number to give to me. Never contacted her. I don't want to. She's a devil. She's evil, like my mom. No. Okay, look. But anyways, the situation at the hospital was when she got trans. You see what he just tried to stop himself from saying? So he's talking about his mom right now. The power of attorney. She's evil. She's a devil, like my mom. Mm. <laughs> I think there's a reason why she was given the power of attorney. Not you. Supported from Dearborn uh, to uh, she Royal. She being who? My mother, and I was there with her. She vomited four buckets of blood. She was going to die right there. Okay. Got her to okay. To get okay, stuff. sir. Sir. Now during that exact moment, judges, judges, talking. Okay, I'm sorry. Um. I, I I agree, Mr. Bernstein, that I'm not going to sit here to litigate the probate matter in terms of a power of attorney, but the victim's relationship to the defendant is what? Excellent. How about we get to direct the court, please? Was the power of attorney granted after your divorce? The power of attorney was verbally given in Dearborn and fraudulently taken. Can you just answer my question? Sorry, yes, it, it verbally, yes. Before the divorce? Well, there was no power of attorney before the divorce. We've been divorced for a year and a half. It was given. Yeah, I, I don't know how Michigan works. And I don't think it's that far away from any other state in the United States. There's no verbal. Well, maybe there is. Maybe there is. Someone can explain this to me. Can you have the, a verbal power of attorney? Power of attorney is a signed document to show that you are the power of attorney, right? You can't just say, hey, you're my power of attorney. Okay, we're good. To the best of my intelligence which you know sometimes it's very lacking i i don't think it works that way it's me at dearborn so no oh no thank you mr jeez oh, all right well without doing more checking i i don't know that i can figure out these phone calls i i understand what you're saying this and i I don't want the victim contacted from your phone at all, ever. Am I clear? Oh, yeah, no problem. Um, what part of Carpenter Road do you live on? I live on, actually, it's right there. What are your cross streets? All right, I'm going to fast forward. They're talking about his address. They don't say his actual address. 
but they they talk about a try this is let's just say this is a, a headache let's just skip well and I wasn't going to deal with anything regarding the uh, the tether. And although there's no violation, I'm gonna, given the the language used by the defendant regarding the alleged victim. I'm going to make it real clear so that we don't have any problems with this. I don't remember what the next clip is. Because this one's almost over. The video still has about 20 minutes left. I don't remember having the long clip at the end. I thought this was the long clip. So we're all going to be surprised. He's making, he's making Judge Simpson think. Look at him. He's like, why are you making me do this? All right, I'm going to skip ahead like 10 seconds. If I remember right, he he's trying to like kind of create a map in his head of where he can and can't go. Because they live close to each other. That's the problem. They live a couple of blocks from each other. So he's trying to make a exact map of what this guy, where this guy can and can't go. Yep, I just skipped, I just skipped a minute and he's still doing that. Problem. All right, here we go within part the gps tether and there is clearly some uh, given the defendant's comments there's clearly a great deal of animosity between these two um the difficulty comes in that they also reside probably less than a mile from each other but if you were to just draw a straight line um and if you were one were driving, then certainly that would be it. So I'm going to give the defendant a block that you're not to enter into. If you shop within that block or this area that I give you, you're going to have to find some other place to shop. Just and also, the whole time I've never crossed to the other side of Carpenter. Um, I've always tried to stay on my side. I've never crossed over. Um, so but would that include the Kroger right there in the CBS? I haven't even given it yet. Okay. Drawing a straight line, he is not to go um, east of Carpenter Road. The block that I'm creating, which is the exclusion zone, is east of Carpenter, south of Washtenaw, west of Gallside, north of Ellsworth. So, so that we're clear, so you're going to have to stay on that west side of Carpenter Road. You're not to travel on the east eastbound Carpenter at all. So if you've got to go around the block to get to your place, you're just going to have to go around the block. Am I clear? Is that a yes? Yes. I'm not trying to picture it in my head. What are you trying to picture in your head? 
So like you say crossing carpenter, what about, and then it hits washing off. Are you talking about that, that corner right there would be like exclusion or does that also cross over to the other side of washing off? I, I, I can picture it on my mind. I'll show you on the Google Maps afterwards. Thank you. It's like a block, I get it. Well, I just don't want to get it wrong. Just to get it wrong. You know, the gas station that's on the corner of Washtenaw and Carpenter. Yeah, there's two of them right close here. You can go on Washtenaw at that gas station, either direction, but you can't go south of Washtenaw. So, you know, Washtenaw down the golf side, you can't go south. You can't go into that area. Okay. On golf side, you can't go east or west. And then Ellsworth, where Meyer is, that includes that block. Mr. Bernstein will show it to you, I'm sure. I have it right here. We'll have it all laid out. You got it? Yes. Thank you. That's Carpenter. That block. That block, you cannot go in that block. Okay. Okay. So he's saying if there's stores along there that you like to go to, you're going to have to go to different stores. What if they're on my side? Your side? Your side? Fine. Okay. So you, just, you can't go to any of those places between those streets, okay? You can go to Kroger, Home Depot, and Lowe's. So like there's a gas station there and there. I can't go to Meyer. But I can go to that. You can go you to can't the, go to Target. One on like towards this jail. On the side of the road. No, you can't go to Hobby Lobby either, George, okay? No, no, no. Um, you can go to that gas station. You can't. Whoa, 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 whoa. I can't go to the Hobby Lobby? What am I going to... Oh, no. I'll trade you. I'll trade you Kroger for Hobby Lobby. But I also want to tra trade Meyer for Kroger. Can I trade Kroger for Hobby Lobby and Meyer? You give me those, I'll give you Kroger. That's what he wants to say. He doesn't say it, but he wants to. Can I go to that gas station? Okay. I'm going to email you. In that block. Yes. I just want to be clear. It's crystal. It's crystal clear, Your Honor. Crystal clear. Thank you. I've signed the order okay. uh, creating that exclusion zone. And then we need to adjourn this out. We almost were here long enough to get to that date. Right. But soon, I, my next day. How far are we going to March 18th or April 1st? Which would work better for you, counsel? Man, I was going to. Sorry, Your Honor, I was going to ask for the 25th. That's not available. That's not available. Um, 18th is fine, Your Honor. We'll take that. Thank you. I'll adjourn this to March 18th. All right. All right. Last clip. Like I said, I don't remember what the last clip is. So I'm going to play it, and then I want to pause it here in a second. But yeah. That was funny. That was funny. I did... One of the parts I skipped over was one of the best parts, though, and I realize it now, where he tries to explain to Judge Simpson what a duplex is. The defendant says, "I live in a duplex, which means I, I live in half the, I live in half the house, but not the other half. So I live on the bottom, and then the neighbor lives in the top. But I don't live in the top; I live in the bottom." And Judge Simpson's just like, "Yeah, I got it. I got it." When he said duplex, man, I can't believe I skipped over that. I was waiting for it at the end and it didn't come. So that's one of the scenes I skipped over, but it was funny. It was funny. And I'm sorry. I removed that from your guys's memory without even putting it there in the first place. All right, let's go to the last clip. What do we got? What do we got? This report is now back. Oh, this woman was back in court today. This is the 70 year old who's addicted to cocaine. That's what this is. This is the follow-up to what we watched last week. The 70-year-old that's addicted to cocaine. This is, uh, she's still in jail. She hasn't been released yet. And this is the follow-up. Yeah. Yeah, Jedi. This is, this is the crier. The one that cries from the start to the end of the, of the hearing. And yeah, there's no difference here. All right, let's go. Back in session, the court will call the case of the state of Michigan versus Pamela Beldiga, case number 23S00829. Great to make death for the people. Good, um, good afternoon, Your Honor. Marcia Creature on behalf of the defendant. Ma'am, Ms. Belgada, could you please state your name? Pamela Beldiga. 
All right, we put this um, case back over today and see what was going on with the treatment. Is that correct? Um, yes, and then also the issue of the pretrial as well, Your Honor. All right. I do have some information as far as the uh, availability of inpatient, if I may. Oh, you may. Okay. Uh, I received an email uh, from Sarah Stewart, and she believes that a bed will be available probably the end of this week. Um, it if not a little later, there's no exact time on those things, but that's the best we can narrow it down to, Your Honor. Thank you. And what would you like to do regarding the pretrial today? Um, I've had an opportunity to discuss uh, with my client uh, the evidence, the evidence, and she would uh, like to take advantage of the offer made by Ms. McDuffie and plead under 4A. That's a correct statement, Your Honor. Um, we had discussed, I think, some of the uh, complications with this case at our last hearing. And I uh, uh, told Ms. Kreischer, all I was requesting for a sentence agreement was that Ms. Billy could simply get into treatment and comply with that. So I'm not asking for, I understand there has to be some form of probation with 4A, but that can be worked into whatever format will allow that to happen. Of course, I defer to the court um, if there were any other requirements, but I'm hoping to keep the Ms. Bell, Ms. Bell Daga is not in the condition, I don't think, at this point to engage with any programming until we can get her treated for this uh, underlying cocaine issue. So that's really where the people are coming from. I will defer to the court and probation for any other terms, but that's all I'm asking is that she simply engage in treatment and, and comply with it. All right. Ms. Bell Daga, understanding that you would. It helps when I unmute. I just realized that this is not a good way to end the video. This is kind of a sad clip. The lat, yeah, is a little bit of sad. Do, if you guys want a bonus clip, I'll play a bonus clip. I, I have, I had one ready to release on Sunday, and I didn't release it. It's another video. I don't know what it is, but it's about ten minutes long. No idea what it is. But if you want a bonus clip to end the night off without, you know, a defendant crying, and she has a, she has a sad story. And we're about to hear it. So if you guys want to end the night off that way, let me know. And we'll finish it off that way. Otherwise, we can just finish it with this one. Up to you all. Just let me know. Be sentenced under 769.4A. And the probation, I mean, the prosecutor has a requirement that you complete and comply with treatment. And this court would have you on some form of probation. Is that what you want to do, ma'am? Yes, Your Honor. Please raise your right hand and be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you got? Yes, I do. Let me lower your hand. I'm going to go over some rights that you have that you're going to be giving up by entering into this plea. Please stop me if you have any questions or if you feel like you need to speak with your attorney again. You have the right to have a trial by a jury, at which time you can call witnesses to speak for you. You can get an order signed by this court to require that those witnesses come to court. You have the right to see, hear, and question any and all witnesses that are called against you, and you have the right to be a witness for yourself, or you could choose to remain silent. If you chose to remain silent, the prosecutor could not comment on that. In addition to that, you have the right to be presumed innocent unless proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand those rights, ma'am? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that you're going to be giving up all those rights, and you're not going to be having a trial of any sort if you enter into this agreement? And you're pleading to a misdemeanor, which is domestic violence, carrying a maximum penalty in this case of up to 93 days and or $500 fine plus court costs. Do you understand all that? Yes, Your Honor. And is that what you uh, still want to do? Yes, Your Honor. Do you also understand that there's no automatic right to appeal your decision? So the decision you're making today, in all likelihood, is going to stick with you. You understand that? Yes, Your Honor. No, it just got loud for me, too. It got loud. It went from normal to loud, and I don't know why. So, yeah, not just you. No idea. No idea how, why that happened. And do you also understand, ma'am, that if you were on probation, parole, or bond at the time you committed this offense on December 18, 2023, then you could be in violation of that probation, parole, or bond? Were you on either of those at the time that you pled? 
that at the time that you uh, committed this offense? I was not, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. All right, understanding all that, um, is there, um, or if you're not a U.S. citizen, you could have immigration consequences. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Let's turn to the, uh, the offense itself. Uh, to the charge of domestic violence, how do you plead? I'm guilty. Does anyone promise you anything that made you no. uh, be guilty that hasn't been placed on the record? Yes. I'm sorry. For me. For me did anyone promise you anything that hasn't been placed on this record? To get no, you? Your Honor. Did anyone threaten you in any way? No, Your Honor. All right. Um, on uh, December 18, 2023, were you at the location of 2189 Glory Lane, apartment number 219? Yes. And at that time, uh, did you? If I may, Your Honor. You may. OK. Um, Ma'am, were you at that time on December 18, 2023, in a dating relationship with an individual by the name of Don Lee? Yes. And on that date and time and at that location, did you physically assault Mr. Lee by hitting him on his chest with your closed fists? Is this because I didn't want him to leave me? Okay, did you? I'm sorry, I could not make that out. Yes, did you hit yes, him on your chest yes, with I your hands? This, or fist? I, will do, I did this on his chest because I, he, he was going to leave me. And I was, I'm sorry. Ma'am? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes, I did bang him on his chest. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Sorry. Anything from the people? Ms. Kircher, I'm sure we can stipulate to the fact that uh, Mr. Lee did not want that contact. Yes, we we would stipulate to that. Yes, thank you. Given that, Your Honor, the people are satisfied. All right, are you satisfied, Ms. McDuffie? I mean, Ms. Kircher? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. I find that there's a factual basis for the pleas when willingly and knowingly made. I'm going to accept your plea, ma'am. Thank you. All right. So at this point, you think that a bail would be available to her this by? I'm hoping in a week or so, Your Honor. Again, we don't know exactly when that would happen. That's that's the latest and most accurate information that I received from Ms. Stewart. All right. And that was on Thursday that I received that information. And what is your request at this time? Well, as we were here the last time, the court said it would consider releasing her home to take care of some things in order, and then she would report to treatment on her own. Um, I would ask the court to allow her to go home for the following reasons. First of all, uh, my client does need to make sure she takes her medication, um, that she is getting is excuse me is not getting at the jail further it's been reported to me by my client that monies have been taken out of her account uh she needs to make sure that monies that situation is handled by going to the bank probably closing that account directing funds from her social security to be deposited in a new account um and I don't know when her social security gets deposited. It's generally the first of the month, but I'm not sure. And also to ensure that her apartment is still in good working order. She's been gone. It's our understanding possibly that Mr. Lee has been able to access that apartment. And finally, she needs to locate her car. It's our understanding and belief that Mr. Lee had access to her car i understand and maybe miss mcduffie can confirm that mr lee is currently no i think i confirmed through violent that mr lee is bonded out on the on the matters that he has before the court and that he could be in possession of her car so she has some things personal things that i think are serious that needs to be taken care of and the alternative at the court uh, you know, she'd be willing uh, to put on a GPS tether and comply with any testing requirements that the court 
um, has. I understand that is a hollow request, given the fact that she had a probation violation for failure to test um, and also positive tests. But I, I believe that her time in the Washtenaw County Jail has given her some insight into, one, her situation with Mr. Lee and how her, harmful it was to her, and secondly, into her cocaine issue. So again, I'm asking uh, for the court to release her. And the alternative, if the court is not willing to wait that long on her release, then at least release her for a short time period, maybe 30, maybe three days, so she can get these items taken care of. Then she can self-report to the back to the Washington County Jail until the bed's available, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. McDuffie. Your Honor, uh, I was going to ask her approach, but I'll just put all this on the record. The last time that we were here, um, Mr. Lee was in custody on another DV, on a DV third case with a different victim. I was concerned at that time. I've made no secret of the fact that it is Miss Beldiga's safety that I'm primarily concerned about with this relationship. And uh, I was concerned that he was going to potentially get released. And I did not want her to be in further danger, obviously, um, given that. Mr. Lee is back in custody again today because he was given the PR bond at that last hearing violated three times within the past week since we've last been here and he is now in custody today. Again, I would hope that um, we originally asked for 50K on his case. It didn't get it. I would hope that now that I still can never guarantee what's going to happen. So not knowing what's going to happen with him for another hour or so until he gets arraigned on those violations. Um, my concern was just that, for example, home confinement, I didn't want Ms. Beldiga trapped in her house where she cannot get away um, if she faces danger. I don't have any problem. Obviously, I want her to go to treatment, but I'm, I'm, we're I'm unfortunately kind of the same difficult situation we were in last week, not knowing where he's going to end up. So um, I just wanted the court and Ms. Prasher and Ms. Beldiga to all have that background in terms of what's going on there. Um, I will defer to the court in terms of what the best solution is here, but the danger may still be present for her. All right, Ms. Bell Daiga is going to be released on a home confinement tether. Thank you. Thank you. And she um, is to go directly to treatment upon uh, when the bed is available. Yes, you are right. No contact with um, Don Lee. You're to test. Uh, I'm going to make it four times per month. So, okay. Ma'am, if you test positive, I'm going to just put you right back in jail. If you have I, contact with Don, right, I will I will not test positive. If you have contact with Don Lee, I'm going to put you right back in jail. You understand that? You stay home except for um, um, going to treatment and to uh, to the banks. Can I go to the grocery store? Well, yeah, first I have to buy my car. And the grocery store. If you, um, Thank you. If your car is not where it needs to be, I suggest you report it stolen, ma'am. That's what you mm -hmm. should probably do. You're not going to be running around looking for a car. Okay? Oh, I know. I, I, I know that you're right. I didn't, I didn't mean to imply that. All right. And then... um. I guess I need to schedule you for a sentencing. I'll schedule you for a sentencing on April 8th at 10 a.m. Okay. You need to contact the probation department in order to have uh, a pre-sentence investigation report done before then. Okay. okay. Um, I, I talked to, to my lawyer and I, I sent a kite to Sarah. I want, I want to get out of Michigan. I want to get away from him. Could I do... I know we don't know my sentence yet, but could I do my probation in Oklahoma? You can talk to the probation department about that. Right now, we're okay. for treatment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. All right. I told you I was going to end it on the the sad one. So again, I don't I don't remember what this one is. I really don't. Oh, I didn't click the right button. All right. No idea. No idea. But let's let's go. Let's go. You're gonna have my intro and outro in this one. So yeah, just saying. <laughs>
this was supposed to be released on Sunday. And I didn't release it on Sunday for whatever reason, but let's go. What's going on? How's everyone doing? Shout out to you. Everybody else seems cool. Chucky, I didn't say. Eat your popcorn. And your Coca-Cola and relax. <laughs> anyway, tell Colin. I'm rich. Ooh, internet's a little slow. Took me like two seconds to pause that, and the voices were off. Anyways, uh, hold on, hold on. We just started this video, so let me start over. What's going on? This is Colin. How's everyone doing? Happy to... I'm just joking. I'm just joking. All right. Okay, I'm going to let this play, because I have no idea what clip this is. I don't remember. This was supposed to be released 48 hours ago. Can you put your... Oh, we got attorneys fighting. We have attorneys fighting in this one. Judge Perkins. Judge Perkins. Attorneys fighting. This one's good. This one's good. I wouldn't show you a bad clip, right? I don't know why I have to say this one's good every time, but I always do. You guys are all awesome. It's about a 10-minute clip. This was supposed to release on Sunday. This happened, I'm going to say, last Thursday or Friday. Bad Scooter. Member for two months. Thank you so much, Bad Scooter. You're awesome, man. I appreciate it. Or... I, I say man, but thank you. Thank you so much, Bad Scooter. Appreciate it. And yeah, now I'm just getting stumbled over words because when I see when I see, you know, green chat pop up, I get excited. Anyways, let's go. Appearance on the record for Darren James Griffith, please. Erica Harris on behalf of Mr. Griffith. Please state your name. We're on the, we're back on, all right, we're back on the record with Mr. Griffith. Uh, um, you go ahead, Counselor. You may, you are, you, today is the date and time set for a trial. We have Officer Bird here. He put his appearance on the record. You were, you were, you were making a, a, a statement off the record as it relates to Mr. Griffith's case. Oh, yes, Your Honor. I was asking for a copy of the supporting documentation that has been filed with the court, a lab report to support the allegations. All right. I don't I don't have a lab report in the file. Just your name, Heineken. Just your name. Whenever your name pops up, I get excited. Every time I see you in the chat, even just a random court chat, and I see your name. I'm like, ah, oh, Heineken's here. I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens. So keep up the good work, my friend. <laughs> see what I did there? Well, defense would move to dismiss, Your Honor. Right. Um, response, Ms. Mason. I'm in another courtroom. I'm sorry. I didn't hear what. What's going on? All right, there's a motion on the floor for uh, this is one of the record for Darren Griffin, James Griffin. Today is date time set for a trial. Your officer is here, and there's a motion on the floor uh, for dismissal based on no lab report. For marijuana in a vehicle? For marijuana in a vehicle. That's not for possession, Your Honor. That's only for if the person has actual. If she, you know what, Your Honor, at this point, then I would object because that's not the applicable standard for that. And if she wants to brief it, we would ask the court that this be briefed, you know, an adjournment for a briefing on this, because that is not the standard for, you know, marijuana in a vehicle. So that's like saying with open up and talking. It's not the standard to prove that it is, in fact, what we're alleging that it is. No, the officers can show anything else. They don't have to have a chemical. It could be like an operating what visibly impaired. You don't have to have a chemical standard for visibly impaired. And you support a visibly impaired with statements or observations. In this Correct. case, the observation would be somebody smoking. I don't know if no, that's a it cigarette. It said marijuana in know. a vehicle. It could be the actual. 
it doesn't have to be, it could be the actual marijuana in there. Well, if it's yes, actual sir. marijuana, well, then, we have yeah, to at this point, it, then let's go to trial. Wait, then let's go. Hey, 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 wait, wait. We're not going to get, we're going to do it orderly, one at a time. That's what we're going to do. When one person is speaking, then the other, let a lot of the, the next person, the other person to speak and listen. Now, the, the, um, the, the uh, consuming marijuana in a via operating motor vehicle uh, on the ticket is 333.297954 paren 4 paren G. That's what the ticket says. And if I may speak, Your Honor, just kind okay. of like, if, if I might speak first, Your Honor, this is on Darren Griffith. Yes. Okay, the officer is Billy Bird. Exactly. I don't see the officer here even for trial. The officer's in person. He needs okay. to get down, checked in on time. And he's okay, here. well, I didn't even know he was here, Your Honor. So if I may have a chance to speak with my client, I didn't know he was okay. even here. Thank you. We'll pass it. All right. So, prosecutor is talking. I've never heard a, a prosecutor say my client never heard a prosecutor speak that might be a normal thing that might be a normal thing I'm not saying that it's wrong of her to say that but yeah <laughs> i love this i love this clip when you get attorneys battling i love it i love it and judge perkins is just like guys 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 i deal with this i heard sheep all day long you guys are the professionals here you guys know how to conduct yourself in a court and you guys are talking stop just let me let me do this. Let me do my job. He's good. Judge Perkins is awesome. Momentarily. She's upstairs. She's right up. Join the room, please. All right. As soon as Mr. Green he throws up the thing. <laughs> Your Honor, I think we have uh, kind of have a resolution on the motion issue regarding marijuana in the vehicle situation. Well, hold that it's a, um, it's a state case. So Correct, Your Honor. So and again, um, I, I I would like to really I would like to apologize to the court for that uh, mistake in putting an offer in on that. I checked out and it was a it's a state case, so I'm sorry about that, Your Honor. No problem. All right. Um, All right. So what she just said, the prosecutor Miss Mason, she's awesome. Miss Mason's awesome. I watch her throughout a bunch of different courts, and I've said this before. She has three monitors set up in a bunch of different courts. She has multiple headsets on her head. She continues to jump in different courts at different times. She's great at her job. But this is not her case. This is not a city case. It's a state case. So she just got that whole fight that happened that we just saw two minutes ago is irrelevant because she's not even the prosecutor on the case. Yeah. We're, it's This clip isn't over. We're only halfway through it. But we're on the record with Raymond Grant, officer. Back on the record, Mr. Griffin. Mr. Griffin, I've given everybody an opportunity to pre-try the case. Uh, where are we at? You may be seated. Court does some case on the people versus or I'm sorry. And of course, my editing is awesome. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. <clears throat> All right, um, let's go back on the record with uh, Mr. You're free to leave, Mr. Gavin. All right. Let's go Have back, a back on the record, Mr. Griffin. Mr. Griffin, I've given everybody an opportunity to pre try the case. Uh, where are we at? Good. Defense is ready to proceed to trial, Your Honor. Judge, the people have spoken with the officer, and speaking with the officer, there's a um, body-worn uh, camera uh, that the officer informed me about, and I would like to have that body-worn camera uh, to be able to proceed to this trial. Uh, I would request that there be an adjournment. Uh, I think it's in the best interest of not only the people and the defense counsel to have the body-worn camera to be presented at trial. Take your hat off, please, Mr. Griffin. All right, so the motion that's on the floor was to 
was the dismissal, as I understand it, based on there not being any lab reports. All right. If we did get the um, if we did get the video, what is the video? What is what? Is, how is the video going to help you, Mr. Mark Martin? Uh, the video is going to help me because uh, speaking with the officer, uh, the officer uh, let me know that there are statements that are by um, people that describe uh, saying that they were smoking of marijuana. And that can help me to where defense is arguing this motion, saying that they never tested marijuana. If they never tested it, how can it be marijuana? Uh, also, secondly, the officers, through his experience, and time and being a officer, I believe is uh, important enough that can put on the record that what was being uh, smoked was marijuana. So I believe that uh, if the substance is in question and they're arguing that this is not marijuana, I have the officer that uh, through their experience and through the video can help corroborate uh, the situation that happened. Well, I don't know if they're arguing that it's not marijuana, I don't think that they, I think that they're saying, I mean, and your burden is to prove that it's marijuana. Yes, Judge. And if the people, you know, being noticed of this motion, uh, talking with the officer that the, uh, uh, I'll say as of right now, because it hasn't uh, been tested in marijuana, the substance uh, is in evidence and can proceed to test uh, that substance for marijuana. You said that you have the substance in evidence? Uh, speaking with the officer, yes, there it is in evidence. Okay, so go ahead, Counselor Miss Harris. Based on the statements, uh... no, no. <laughs> I just hold on. I want to pause it because this is a great legal case. This is a great legal case. All right, hold on, hold on. I gotta find where I was. Hold on. Evidence should have been tested. Yep. All right. This is this is exactly where I was. I'm going to go back like four seconds. I just did my thing where I went to the beginning of the video instead of hitting pause. But yeah, do you guys understand what's going on? The defense attorney is rocking it based on technicalities. There's no lab report. Everyone knows what weed is. Not everyone. I'm not. I'm going to retract that word. Strike that. Every every police officer knows what weed is. People driving around with weed in their car, they know what it is. That officer knew it was weed. The prosecution and the state, whoever's charging the crime, did not cross their T's and dot their I's on this case. They didn't test it to make sure it was weed. They're like, oh, this is weed. They put it in evidence, and that's it. No, you still gotta test it. You gotta have you have you have to have that lab report. And good on this, good on this defense attorney. And she is a, a public defender. And everybody who hates on public defenders, this is what they do. They see more cases every day than than your private attorney does. They are overloaded, but she nails this, nails it. Like no. I need this, this, and this to make this charge even, even happen. And I don't have I any of these things. She's awesome. She's awesome. Ms. Harris, kudos to you. You did a great job. I am going to let this play out. There's only about uh, like two or three minutes left of this case. I'm going to let it play out. We're going to go hang out on Discord after this. Let's go hang out. Let's have a good night. Yeah, you guys are all awesome. Uh, I, I do have... Let's see. I know, uh, Mary, Mary, I think I said thank you to you. I think I said thank you to you. If not, thank you, Mary, so much for the two months. That's awesome. Love seeing your name pop up in chat. And legal fiction, legal fiction for a $10 super chat for the editing budget. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely need to get better at editing. I really do. I need to, I need to, I need to figure out. It's not the, yeah, I know what I'm doing wrong. It's just how I watch court every day is is the problem. But thank you so much, Legal Fiction. Legal Fiction, jump in Discord tonight, man. I would love to hear your your uh, insight on a few things. So, anyways, let's finish this clip. 
Let's all have a great night. It's only Tuesday. We've got a big day tomorrow. You know what we have tomorrow? Broken system, broken trust is in court tomorrow. So we're going to hang out with him tomorrow. No, we're not going to hang out with him. We're going to hang out in court and watch him tomorrow is what we're going to do. You guys are all awesome. Hope you guys uh, have a great night. Hope you guys have a great rest of the week. I've got a lot of videos that that I have prepped and planned to go. And yeah, I've been kind of slacking over the last, I don't know, 48 hours. So let's fix that. Let's fix that. Anyways, I see Jay Hart. Jay Hart just posted a Discord link. Let's hang out on Discord. All right. Till next time. Bye. Um, not being prepared is not good cause for an adjournment. I'll, I will start there. Um, two, today is the date and time set for trial. Evidence should have been tested. Body cam footage should have been prepared and available for today's hearing. Again, it is the people's burden to prove that it was marijuana. And even if we're relying on the testimony alone, scent alone is not enough. Um, that comes from a litany of cases. One in particular, People versus Tate, 35978, Mish App, January 26, that's 2023. And that's them quoting People versus Armstrong. That's the slip opinion, docket number 360693. So we're going to need more than just some testimony. And if there were other people, hearsay statements, we're going to need those other people here as well. None of this evidence, none of these witnesses are available. Again, not being prepared is. All right. Thank you so much, Legal Fiction. Supplemental editing funds. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Legal Fiction, jump in, jump in Discord tonight. Hang out with us, please. I'm, I am personally inviting you to jump in Discord and hang out with us. I know you did that. You got you got your pause number one. You got your you got your pause number one. And I, and I wanted to wait till Prosecutor Harris stopped talking, but there, the time was getting shorter. So I, I wanted to make sure to give you the correct amount of time to uh, to say thank you. So thank you. It's not good cause for an adjournment. There's nothing to substantiate moving forward. Defense renews its motion to dismiss. Judge, the people were put on notice of this motion today, no more than less than the time that we have been, but I've been able did I miss Lissette? Lissette, thank you so much. Somehow I missed that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I don't know how I missed you. Uh, I'm sorry, but welcome. Welcome to uh, the Cooligans. <laughs> Legal Fiction, coming in hot. Two two months. Two months. Thank you so much, Legal Fiction. You're awesome, man. I'm able to zoom in and speak to the court. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm grant the motion to dismiss. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. All right. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Um, Mr. Griffin, your case is dismissed. Have a very good day. Best of luck to you. Thank you. You too. All right. Dismissed. Judge did a good job there. Judge did a really good job. I I already I already felt the Jedi. I felt your your force presence coming, and I wanted to announce dismissed. Judge Judge did the right thing. Judge did the right thing. Prosecutor Harris. You know, I hope this guy that's on screen right now paused. I I really hope he sends her a thank you letter. He just got his case dismissed because she is awesome. Like I said, public defenders are awesome at what they do. They are overworked and underpaid. They really are. But they are really good. They really are. And she saw that. She saw that little technicality. Oh, you don't have a lab report that shows what this drug was? I don't care if everyone on the planet knows what it is. I don't have a lab report. You can't prosecute them. Dismissed. Gone. All right. Thank you, Jedi, for can I get a third? Yes, you can. All right. When I hit play now, we're going to hit the outro. So you guys all have a great night. Hope to see you in Discord. Until tomorrow. Bye. Great.